Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Momentum Lab. This is the fourth episode in our Factor Investing series. The first three episodes were dedicated to value investing, where we have delved into the basics of value investing, how is it created, and what indices are there for one to get an exposure to value factor, and also what works well alongside the factor of value. Now, in the fourth episode, I'm going to show how do you create a value investing portfolio, especially for DIY investors. to create a value investing portfolio you also need to know what are the best practices to create one such portfolio if you remember we earlier did some videos on momentum which specifically talked about the best practices like what should be the ideal number of stocks that you need to hold in a momentum portfolio how frequently should you rebalance and what metrics to use to construct a momentum portfolio so we're going to touch upon the similar aspects while constructing a value portfolio now for momentum we had good data and good research papers available in indian context especially written by mr rajan raju but in the case of value investing unfortunately we could not find a good research paper of that repute which delves into the art of constructing a value portfolio so for this reason i had to rely upon aqr capital management's research they have published an article in the journal of portfolio management way back in 2015 that is titled fact fiction in value investing now in this research paper they have talked about all the aspects that i covered of what are the best practices in value investing so i'm going to take a reference from this research paper and try to show the key insights now just like i have mentioned uh, resolve asset management sometime back uh on uh, picking up adaptive asset allocation so aqr capital management is also an equally good and in fact even better than resolve Ma asset management while they publish lot of insights research on the uh, factor investing space that they do and i am generally a fan of the investment management firms which publicize not just their performance but also the detailed detailed methodology in which they are creating or constructing their portfolios and sharing it with public so this gives double the confidence because they are practicing what they preach and also showing the nuts and bolts if not the exact entire mechanism but at least they are showing at a broader level what they are trying to do so ra rather than relying on an academic purely academic research paper i would give more weightage to someone who is an actual practitioner so without further ado let's take a look at what this research paper talks about i'm going to share that link in my youtube description and also give you an idea of the best practices that are mentioned in this research paper so this is the aqr capital management website you can take a look at it i'm going to share this in my youtube description as well and this is the research paper that i am referring to it is called as fact fiction and value investing uh, as published by the aqr now in this there are uh, certain insights that are covered i'm going to summarize them in a form of a slide you if you want you can take a look at this research paper also which is there in the youtube description so the first uh, key takeaway from this research paper is that you don't have to have a concentrated portfolio of stocks to get exposure to a value factor in fact on the contrary if you actually take exposure to few stocks to few value stocks then actually it might give unnecessary risk and even if let's say you get returns or excess returns from this concentrated portfolio it is possibly because of the idiosyncratic risk uh, rather than uh, the value factor so they suggest to have a diversified portfolio of stocks so that's an advantage for the diy investors because you don't have to actually do a detailed deep dive into each stock to understand whether it is actually cheap or not even if you are broadly correct in picking up a uh, myriad set of cheap stocks you you will still be able to do much better than doing a concentrated portfolio of stocks and that's what is seen in the long term evidence uh, when by they did the back tests so the first takeaway is have a diversified portfolio of stocks now what is the exact number of these diversified portfolio of stocks they also quantified that number anywhere between 25 to 50 is an optimal number to have an exposure to value as a factor 
again 25 to 50 is also a broad number but for someone who's in the diy space an ideal number would be between 25 to 30 now if you remember the nse index nifty 500 value 50 it has 50 stocks nifty 200 value 30 it has 30 stocks nifty 50 value 20 has 20 stocks that spread if you see is from 20 30 50 20 to 50 stocks same as the insight that were presented in this research paper if you go less than 20 or 25 then there will be more noise and if you go more than 50 also again you might end up just getting the uh, market exposure rather than the value exposure so let's cover to the third insight the third insight is how frequently should you rebalance your portfolio especially of value stocks the nse index proposes or uh, they usually do at six month interval but in this paper they have categorically mentioned that by holding a value portfolio of more than six months actually it might deteriorate your exposure to value factor instead if you want to have the factor exposure fresh an ideal period is between 1 to 3 months that is 1 month to 1 quarter to have a regular rebalancing now let's go to the next insight what is that one metric on which we should construct our value portfolio if you again go back and refer to the nse indices they don't use one single metric they use always a combination of value metrics like pe pb and uh, ev to ebitda or roc that is what is proclaimed in even in this research paper also to have a combination of value metrics rather than any single metric so they have given a couple of examples of what could be those value metrics it could be pe pb ev to ebitda cash flow yield and dividend yield in fact by having a combination of these value factors or value metrics does better than having a single metric and also it is better even in terms of sharpe ratio that's what their research has shown now let's see the next insight they also talked about what combinations of metrics make the value investing even better so think of it like uh, our previous episode like what can be the combinations uh, along with the value factor which will make the returns better so there are again different approaches one can take when doing a multi factor combination there are three the first is you do a double sort that is first you sort all the stocks in your universe by value and then again sort the next uh, set of stocks on the factor of your choice maybe it can be momentum or quality etc so you applied one sort of filter or one sort first and then you pick the top stocks and uh, then again you do another sort and then you pick uh, for the refined stock this is called as double sorting the other way is to do a barbell approach that is you construct a portfolio of two factors by having let's say an equal allocation of uh, for example moment, momentum stocks and an equal allocation of value stocks momentum or low volatility so you are actually taking exposure to pure factors and combining it in a portfolio level let's say you have a portfolio of 30 stocks 15 can be value 15 can be momentum so that is called as a barbell strategy then the next way is of giving ranking you take all the stocks let's say you give a particular weightage to each metric for example price to expense ratio you give 20% price to book you give another 20% roc you give another 20% momentum of last 6 months you give another 20% and something else another 20% so if you see each stock is ranked or scored on multiple metrics some are value some are quality some are momentum and then you finally arrive at a final score that is the third form of creating a multi factor strategy so this research paper talks about this that is the the third option which is ranking or clubbing or uh, getting the stocks based on combination of metrics and in this combination of metrics you don't you not only have value but also add a tinge of quality a tinge of momentum and this combination works really well even better than pure value so that's the uh, whole essence of this uh, uh, research paper they have said that if you add value alongst uh, alongside it with momentum then the sharpe ratio increases from 0.46 of value alone to 0.79 if you add value plus profitability profitability is again a euphemism for quality then the sharpe ratio 
increases from 0.46 to 0.58 but if you actually combine value plus momentum plus profitability which is quality then the sharp ratio gets even stronger at 0.84 so all these three are complementary factors which are combining to its overall improvement so these are the main takeaways that we have seen uh, just to summarize one the ideal number of stocks in a value portfolio should be anywhere between 25 to 50 ideally 25 to 30 second a rebalancing frequency of 1 to 3 months and how do you construct uh, how do you create a, a, a ranking system for value it can be a combination of metrics not only one and in the combination of metrics can be price to equity price to book uh, dividend yield ev to ebitda and if you may you may also add other quality and momentum uh, parameters to get a final ranking so this is about the best practices now let's look at the screener that i'm going to create for diy investors and you can take inspiration from this and you can create your own screeners so we'll use screener.in website to build our value portfolio now first in this i created a template called as value hyphen momentum lab so someone would want to use this screener to directly fetch uh, the stocks that you can use this i'll be sharing in this description but there is nothing fancy in here what am i using here actually i'm just asking the set of stocks which have a market capitalization greater than 1.5 lakh crore and rest all are just the columns that i'm importing why 1.5 lakh crores you can use any market cap that is of your choice i have chosen let's say the top 60 if you we want even the mid cap small cap you can use it let's say 50k 15k or 20k whatever is your choice just that's it nothing else no complex stuff just enter the market cap and get the data now what all data points do we need we'll need the pe ratio the roce numbers dividend yield six month return cmp by bv nothing but this is the price to book ratio you can add even more fields that you want i've covered at least three aspects of different factors that is for value pe price to book dividend yield for quality roce for momentum six month returns if you want you can take 12 month returns six month returns and then get a combination of six month 12 month returns the the op the optionalities are endless i'm just trying to show a simple screener which will help you in identifying good value stocks to create a portfolio now these fields then i'm going to export in a google sheet so i'm just going to copy paste all these and just like this and paste it here so already done that now once i get all the list of stocks and their respective matrices in a google sheet in this format what i'm going to do is i'm going to create couple of new columns to get the rankings i want the rankings of p e ratio roce dividend yield momentum price to book and then ultimately calculate the final rank the final rank is a combination of all these ranks now how do i get the p e rank of a particular stock you can just use this formula equal to rank i'm going to select this particular cell and select the entire range now whether it is an ascending or a descending order is important so we want stocks which are low pe as value stocks because stocks which are low in terms of pe are the value based stocks and the value based stocks we want them to be ranked lower like rank 1 rank 2 etc so we need to put one which basically means the order is ascending so if you see a stock which has a pe ratio of 6.79 has a pe rank of 1 now for roc also we're going to do the same thing a stock not the same thing sorry for roc it is a quality metric the higher the returns on capital employed then it is good for us it is a quality metric and we would want to give uh, a lower rank of 1 so what we're going to do is equal to rank we'll select the roc entire column and say zero which will then give us the one second
So for ROC, we are going to use the rank function just like this, but the order is going to be descending because we want stocks which have a very good return on capital employed to be ranked in the top. That is the lower rank of one, two, etc. So as you can see, the stocks which have uh, a very high ROC are ranked one. Now I'm not a severe real estate advisor. That's why I'm not taking the names of stocks and not giving any recommendations. Just the logic or formula. How do you calculate? Now for dividend yield, dividend yield again we need the order to be descending. Meaning high dividend yield stocks will get uh, the lower ranks of one, two, etc. So it will be equal to rank, and we select the particular cell in dividend yield. And then select the entire range, and then what we do is we put zero. So as you can see, the high dividend yield stocks like this, which is you know, 9.73 percent, has got a rank of one. So for momentum, what we what we will be doing is the higher the returns in the last six months, the lower the rank. So it will be descending order equal to rank. Go to select six month, the entire range. And then, comma zero. And for price to book, price to book, uh, the lower the price to book number, better it is in terms of value. So for price to book, it is an ascending order, and we're going to give the number one in terms of the ranking. Now we got the ranks of all these uh, different matrices. Then you can combine the final rank. The again, this the combination of final rank. Is also uh, an art in itself. You can choose what combinations to use. There is no one particular formula. If you see NSC, they give equal weightage uh, for Nifty 500 value 50 or Nifty 200 value 30. But in case of Nifty 50 value 20, they give a higher weightage of 40% to RSE, and then remaining rest they have given 20-20% weightage to dividend deal, price to equity, price to book. So that choice is upon us to ultimately decide and come up with the final rank. So I'm not going to calculate the final rank consciously because I'm, as I mentioned, I don't want to make any recommendations, but I'm going to leave it at that. I may be sharing this Google sheet uh, because it doesn't constitute a recommendation as yet. You can apply your own formula and arrive at the best stocks in terms of value as a factor and then uh, create your constructed own portfolios. And uh, if, as I mentioned, if you want a larger number of stocks to uh, be uh, as a set of units, then you can always increase the market cap or decrease the market capitalization and get an even larger number of stocks as your universe. So this is how you can create your value uh, portfolio using uh, screener.in and Google Sheets. That's all uh, for this episode, guys. We are wrapping up the value series and then we're going to start with the low volatility next. Low volatility is also an interesting factor as seen across the world, especially even in India also. And we're going to uh, do a similar exercise of what constitutes low volatility, what is the historical evidence of low volatility performing in India, what are the academic research papers published on low volatility, and how do you build a screener to construct a portfolio of low vol stocks. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you. Bye.